Hello there and welcome to a brand new day in the studio. If you're wondering what happened to that larger painting that we were working on yesterday, yes, I'm going to uh, do my best to finish that larger studio painting uh, next week. Next week is the last sitting that I have uh, with Steve with my portrait group, so I really want to get it finished. The problem was uh, the globe that I painted yesterday didn't completely dry. And uh, I really wanted to retouch the background colors to prepare myself basically for the grand finale of that painting. But I, I didn't feel quite comfortable uh, painting onto a painting that's still kind of in the middle of drying, especially that larger studio painting. So what we're going to do today is today we are going to paint a John Singer Sargent master copy. And this is going to be painted in a uh, paint along style. So that is all of you that would enjoy uh, watching a painting demonstration of a John Singer Sargent study and recreating it on your own, this video is going to be just for you. And at the end of this video series, so I, I'm thinking at this point it's going to be two videos, just two videos. Uh, so one is going to be the start of the John Singer Sargent Alla Prima uh, Master Study. And then the second one is going to be uh, finishing up that, uh, finishing up this painting. So. By the end, you're going to have a, uh, a basically a progression, a progression from the beginning of this painting to the end of this painting. I would suggest you watch both the first one and the second one first before painting along with me. Watch those videos to their entirety and then bring out your palette, all of the colors that we're going to describe uh, later, and then just paint along with me. You can pause at any point in the paint along video. Don't think you have to paint at the same pace that I'm painting. Some of you will paint faster than me. Others will paint a little bit slower. And then uh, there's always going to be the in between. That being said, let's get to this painting. So what we have here on the palette is titanium, white, flake white, burnt umber, alizarin permanent, cadmium red medium, yellow ochre, sap green, ultramarine blue, ivory black, and our medium of choice today is Liquin Original. So for those of you that are new to this channel and want to know exactly what materials I'm using, you can always go ahead and scroll down to the description box of this video and I'll have all of that information typed up for you. And here is the original John Singer Sargent painting. So this is the original painting that we're going to be using for reference for this video or video series, uh, depending on how many videos it will take me to create it. But uh, you're going to take a really good look at the simplicity of this painting. Now it is very, very uh, deceiving. Now we think that this kind of painting was created very simply, very easily, uh, effortlessly, right? Well. Uh, those of you that have been watching my channel for enough time knows you know that this kind of uh, painting does take a lot of precision. So in order to get that precision, we're going to be doing a little bit of a paint along. So this is going to be a little different to the original or to the more classical uh, traditional portrait painting tutorial videos that I used to do and still do. Uh, so I'm going to try out something a little bit different here with my camera angles. So what you're going to have is a side-by-side -side image. Uh, so you're seeing a side-by-side -side image now, hopefully, of the canvas and the original Sargent painting. So this video is going to be designed for you to follow along and paint as you like. Now, since it's going to be a side-by-side -side, uh, image, so the Sargent and then the one that we're working on, there's no room for the palette. So I'm going to be switching between shots so you can see how I mix up certain color combinations. So we're going to start off with the background color. Now the background color is going to be a little bit of a very simple brown. So we're going to use burnt umber, cadmium red, medium. So burnt umber, cadmium red, medium. It all depends on your computer screen. Uh, now ideally we would want to be working from the original painting in the museum where it hangs or wherever it's hanging. Uh, but we don't have access to that all the time on the internet. So we're going to do the best we can with the colors that we have. So basically, liquid original, uh, burnt umber, cadmium red medium, and a little bit of ultramarine blue just to kind of help to combat the uh, heat from these uh, warmer colors, that is the burnt umber and the uh, cadmium red medium. So once you have a color that's uh, somewhat about like this, we're actually going to want more paint. So 
that's the thing about Ala Prima. Ala Prima is wet on wet. You're going to want a lot of paint. You're going to want to work with a lot of paint. So hopefully this will be a good guide for you to follow along. I know a lot of people have been following along with my uh, my other portrait painting tutorial. So I thought I might as well create a paint along for those of you that are uh, interested. All right, so this color, a very warm kind of simple brown is what we're going to use for the initial background color. Now bear in mind that my camera is going to be at an angle with respect to the canvas. I can't really have it right front, close, and center. I'll try to keep it as close as possible, but just bear in mind. So now let's go ahead and switch to the side-by-side -side format. Hopefully the side-by-side -side format works out. I actually don't know if that's going to work out with my editor, uh, but wishful thinking. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off kind of backwards. So we're starting off with color first. So we're going to take a look now at the background color. And I think with Ala Prima, it's just a good idea to get the background taken care of like immediately because the background color um, is going to be something that we're going to want to relate to the, uh, the rest of the picture. So just very simply, just kind of making crisscross marks, very simple now. Just want to cover and we're going to want to leave kind of like a little ghost in here. Uh, a little bit of a kind of an indication as to where the head is going to fit. Now it doesn't have to be that precise right now, but I'm already making the decision of maybe placing the top of the hair somewhere about right there. So let's just go ahead and cover this little corner here. The back of the neck might or might not fit around here. We don't know just yet. We just want to have all of this surface covered. All right, now we switched brushes here. This is a clean bristle brush. So this is one thing you're gonna to want to know for Ala Prima. Not always the case, okay. But um, I prefer to use bristle brushes just because they can carry quite a lot of paint. Uh, and we're gonna really want to be carrying a lot of paint along with us for this painting. So those of you that are following along with this painting, or those of you that are just sitting sitting back having a cup of tea or, or whatever. Um, it's important to know that the brushes that you use for Ala Prima are gonna be a little different to the brushes that you're gonna to wanna to use for say the classical approach. So I'm mixing up a very simple dark. So this dark is no more complicated than ivory black, ultramarine blue, alizarin permanent. And we're gonna go for the color right away. We're gonna go for the, um, basically the value and the color that we want right off the bat. So I think it's gonna be a warm dark. So something around like this. So with each little section of the painting, you're gonna to want to have a different brush. So the brush for the background, I put it off to the side because you, you'll see that we're going to kind of optimize our time or our brush strokes by having individual brushes for each little task. Now one thing you're gonna to wanna to know about Ala Prima is that um, things aren't really going to look that appealing to the human eye um, as quickly as with the classical approach. So with the classical approach to painting, you would want to do a very careful underpainting and, a, or, and or a very careful transfer drawing instead of just jumping right into this. So th this right here, uh, for those of you that are following along, is just the top of the hair. So we just basically want a very simple dark. So that dark color that we had, uh, the uh, basically, you know, this could even be as simple as ivory black and alizarin permanent, just on a practical level. So basically we're going for the, uh, we're, we're shooting for gold here. We're, we're going right for the value that we want. And we're going to be drawing with the color right away. Now the thing about Ala Prima is that you're basically doing the same thing Ala Prima as you are in the traditional or the classical approach to uh, painting. The only difference is it does complicate drawing. So if uh, you're coming at this with very very minimal drawing it's okay. It's okay. Just know that it's going to be a little little bit uh, more difficult to obtain the right shape. But the trade-off is that you get much more experience with oil paint handling. So this really teaches you paint handling. 
And already you're starting to kind of get an idea of the direction that we're heading. So the back of the hair, you know, there's going to be a little shape for the ear there, but we'll get to that. So very simple. Now you're starting to see that we're starting to outline the back of the hair. Super simple. Now the idea is to continue to move back and forth between the brushes. So this is what I mean by moving back and forth between the brushes. So this is the brush that we're going to want to use for the, um, for the background. And again, I'm going to keep this brush off to the side, differentiated from the, um, the dark color for the hair. And this is just two shapes and two different colors. And that's all. Keep it nice and simple. So now for the side of the face, I'm guessing that there's going to be a large, simple shape coming down here. All the way down there. We're not really worried about the boundary of the chin. It could be there. It could be there. We don't know yet. But we're just trying to cover all of this. Now, one thing I'm noticing that I could do, and I'm, it might be a very risky thing to do, is to look for the back corner of the neck. So again, we're just looking for a shape here. And if it's in the wrong place, it's in the wrong place. It's okay. We will come back in with the flesh tone color and correct it later. So now with that same dark that we have, uh, we're actually going to put in um, another dark shape uh, that we're starting to notice that might or might not exist around here. Now we don't necessarily know if this is where it's going to be, but we're going to take a stab at it. And by keeping your shapes simple and easy, as uh, most of you know what I'm going to say, keep your shapes simple and easy for you to understand so that when the time comes to make changes, those changes will be simple and easy to manage. And we're going to definitely going to, we're definitely going to have to make adjustments to these shapes. But the thing is, with Alla Prima, move fast. Apply the paint really, really fast. Give yourself time to um, uh, think about what shapes you're putting down, but usually with Alla Prima, you want to move very quickly. I don't know, and it's just kind of fun to move like that. And this is what I mean by uh, keeping it simple and easy. Look how if I go a little too high up there. That's simple to just move it down. That's the kind of fluidity that we want to keep with the uh, painting. So now the next thing we're going to want to look at is the cast shadow. So the shadow that's being casted or projected by the light hitting the model's face around here and then being projected all down here and I guess to the side of the nose as well. So those of you following along with me at home, this is another brush. Yes, it's going to be very useful to keep a variety of brushes. So actually what I'm noticing is that the cast shadow is a little bit darker than the uh, value for the background. So we're going to go ahead and remix the value for the background here. So this is the background brush. This is the value for the background. I'm going to put this brush aside now. And now we're going to switch to the new or should I just say the clean brush? And this is yet another bristle brush. So um, let's go ahead and use a little bit of burnt umber. We want to go for the obvious. So that shadow is rather brown. So I'm going for burnt umber. No need to complicate it. Burnt umber and just right, mixing right in between these colors here. And let's see how this does on its own. Trying to keep these color mixtures nice and simple for uh, everyone following along. Now, this is going to be a very, very um, kind of transitioning phase to the painting. So we're going to start to put in the cast shadow. And if you get the shadows placed just right, remember those of you that are following along with your photo reference in the corner there, if you get your um, shadows placed, just right, you're in a really, really, really good spot to continue to develop the painting. So it's okay if this shadow kind of merges a little too closely with the background color. I'm actually um, off camera here. I'm actually adding a little more yellow ochre to this area. And I'm going to add a little more cadmium red medium. So cadmium red medium yellow ochre because at least on my computer screen might look different to you. Uh, this value is a little bit lighter. Okay, so the thing about um, this particular stage of the painting is that you want to put in a little bit more than you need. 
That is, I'm adding a little bit more shape to the cast shadow on the neck here. See that little rectangle shape here? I'm adding a little bit more of a shape than I might need. That is so that I can come back in when I come back in with the flesh tone and cover it. And remember, this video is going to be split into several parts. Just because uh, painting a portrait takes a long time and I really don't think that it's a good idea to try to rush all of that on you. So this, uh, let's say that that shadow comes right, right over there. So the next thing really is going to be uh, relating this little triangle to this little shape for the ear. So there's a very definitive angle here. So we're going to just make a mark right there. And the ear, it looks like we're going to have to come back in with the, um, the flesh tone and carve out that ear. Not a problem. Whoops, this crashed into my camera. Not a problem. So now we're going to go ahead and estimate where the cast shadow for the nose is going to be. And this is where things are going to look a little bit wonky. So every time uh, you're reworking or starting a portrait, there's always a little awkward phase in the portrait. Let's be real. We're, we're painting pictures of individual people's face. Others are going to be much more critical about the drawing than they would be critical about, say, painting a, a teapot or a, a tea kettle or whatever. So my advice to you, don't worry about uh, whether or not this shape is exactly where it needs to be just yet. Just put in enough of the shape there for you to work with. Now John Singer Sargent trained very classically um, in his younger years. It was only later when he studied with uh, Carlos Durant um, where he really learned, uh, where he was really given the information in terms of creating paintings wet on wet. Now coming at this with uh, the experience that we've had, with a traditional or classical oil painting technique is actually going to be very useful. So notice how uh, this is a very simple little shape here that we're putting in for the nose. And we're unifying that shape here with the cast shadow on the side of the mouth. This is the point where it's going to look a little bit um, kind of suspicious. But we're putting in enough information for us to carve out. And we're gonna keep this brush, we're gonna wanna keep this brush here separate and let's not lose track of the gesture of the pose the model's head is slightly turned back so don't let any of this stuff worry you just cover it put enough for you to work with you need something to to start off with you can't start finished And as you would expect, here is another brush, a clean brush, and this is actually a brand new brush. It is a size six flat brush. There was an incredible sale going on, and I just, I couldn't, I couldn't pass it up, man. This brush probably cost me a couple dollars. Yes, a couple dollars. Now anyway, uh, we're gonna go ahead and mix up a flesh tone, so I'm gonna have, to, I'm really going to explain this flesh tone the best that I can now. So it was the uh, Liquid Original, cadmium red medium and the um, titanium white that we used initially. Yes, we're letting some of the background color influence this color. So now we're going to put in a little bit more cadmium red. So we're going to want something that's a little bit kind of a pinkish orange. Burnt umber. We're going to use a little bit of burnt umber just to neutralize the heat and the saturation from these colors. Now we're not going to want too much medium. I used perhaps too much um, of our liquid original, but it's okay. We'll just add even more paint. Now Sargent's paintings have a lot of texture, like a lot of paint. So I think, again, it would really benefit you to use uh, bristle brushes. They can really carry a lot of paint. So I say something about like this, something that's about a little orangey, a little bit of pinkish. So we're going to make it a little more pinkish with the alizarin permanent. I think this is about good. And we're going to want to start off with the hairline. 
So um, basically right around here, we're going to want to be very practical here. We're going to want the paint to just magically, just magically touch the edge of the hair and automatically soften that edge. Alaprima is a very, very strong way to create paintings, but it's also a little bit of a, I'd, I'd say it's a little more risky, a little closer to the Fast and Furious kind of approach to creating a painting. So right off the bat, that color looks a little too orange. So off camera, I'm adding a little bit of titanium white, a little bit of titanium white to raise the value and to um, kind of bring down the oranginess of that color that we mixed up on the palette. But you're going to have to feel it out for your for yourself on your painting. So we're just going for the hairline right now. Not worried about all this stuff. Just want to establish these outside shapes. And then we're going to move this all the way down here. We're going to want to be very practical with this and cover as much as we can. Now, again, this is going to look a little bit goofy to uh, the, the usual kind of observer of paintings. The usual kind of observer of paintings is going to say, what in the world are you doing? Uh, where is your drawing? Um, where are the outlines? Yeah, this is a way to bypass the outlines because we're looking at shape now. We're thinking about this in terms of shape, not necessarily worried about the outlines. So again, this is a little simple shape here uh, for the, uh, the side of the face. Now we're going to use this same color to um, cut into the back side of the ear. And this, again, we're moving pretty fast, but around this point is when things are actually really going to start to slow down because once we get into the half tones of the face we're really going to take a lot more time with the drawing so again the back of the ear so it's okay if the paint uh, does that gets a little bit um, should I say muddy there but it's all right just add more paint and you're good to go one thing you'll notice that's missing here in um, my materials that I've been showing you is the mineral spirits. Where is the mineral spirits? Um, I am not using it right now. I'm only going to use mineral spirits when I accidentally cross-contaminate um, colors that I don't want to cross-contaminate. So I'm trying to keep these uh, mixtures rather simple. And again, this is a this is a paint along, okay? So uh, we're going to keep this as simple and as basic as possible anyone out there that's really trying to improve on their painting skills. So now we're going to just get this color and just cover the rest of this. See how orange that is? So I'm actually going to add a little bit of titanium white and we're going to shoot for gold. We're going to aim for gold. We're brave brushing this. So really with a little more titanium white, uh, we're really going to try to get that color right away. Uh, which is a very, very, uh, let's say, optimistic thing to look for. But you'd be surprised at the uh, stuff we can get, the effects we can get very quickly. Now, the, the challenge here is not to have straight, not to accidentally put straight white. That's going to be the challenge. And the other challenge is don't get caught up with that. I know that when we look at th uh, faces without features, it's usually what you would imagine in a horror story uh, when you, you know, when you see the, the ghost revealed or something like that. You know, some, it could look like something out of The Conjuring, but don't let that bother you. Just know what you're looking for, and what we're looking for are shapes of color. Now again, using the dark brush, see how quickly we're moving along. Easily, easily can push that shape up. Now let's just go ahead and just cover the rest of this. And now we're going to get, very quickly, we're going to get into a, um, let's just go ahead and put some paint into here. So those of you that are following along with me, this is the same brush. I'm just going to start to cover all of this now. I'm not entirely sure when I'm going to split between uh, videos. This might already be in the next day or so, but... Um, yeah, this is going to be a process that's going to take quite a while. So again, cutting back a little shape here for where the nose might fit. 
Again, don't get too worried about the specifics right now. So we're gonna go ahead and switch into a half tone. Uh, so we're gonna put in some half tones here for the eye sockets. Now I'm gonna switch to a different brush for the half tones and notice that the half tones are gonna live somewhere around here. So I'm actually gonna just mix it right on the side over here. So I added a little bit of cadmium red. Notice we're starting to create a little, uh, a little stream of flesh tone and value in general. Let's not lose the background color though. The background color was a little bit over there. So this is the background color here and I don't want to lose it. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up a little bit of that half tone right here using just the cadmium red and the sap green into this area. Now another thing is, yes, I am using lots of brushes, but I'm going to be real and explain why. Um, yeah, this brush, um, this isn't really relevant to the video, but I mean, like, come on. It was $9.99 and I got it for $2.49. What? I know, right? <laughs> I'm really, really fortunate for that. That was a really nice sale. Um, hopefully you can find sales like that around you. Wish I could find sales like that for paint. So a little bit more cadmium red and a tiny bit of a laser and permanent. The color, I'm really trying to go for that exact color, but I know I'm not going to get it just yet. Just make sure not to lose, okay, on your palette, just make sure not to lose the areas. This is a brush, this is a brush, that's a brush, there's a brush for this, and a brush for this. Just make sure not to lose your brushes, and you'll, you'll see why I have this um, separation of uh, brushes per value. So let's go ahead and go into the half tones here. So there's gonna be a little bit of a half tone there for this side of the eye socket. And we want this to be very, very uh, simple. But now we're going to start to build in more precision. So that side of the eye socket is going to be right around here. And Sargent in particular, he really looked at the mask of the face and developed the mask of the face. Kind of, uh, I think he would describe it kind of like a mannequin. Um, you know, like a hairdresser's mannequin, and then uh, sculpt out the forms from there. So now I'm switching back and forth between the brush for the flesh tone, the simple flesh tone, and see how we're gonna be working very, very quickly, very rapidly back and forth between uh, brushes. I'm actually going to switch now to, um, in a minute, I'm gonna switch to the, uh, the dark brush, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Carving out, we're carving out just a little shape there for the uh, the glabella. So here is the brush for that, for the dark of the hair. So we're gonna actually use that and we're gonna shoot right for the eyebrows. And again, we're trying to go, we're going for gold. We're going for the final touches right away, knowing we're not really gonna be able to get them right away, like let's be honest. But we're going to want to keep each brush organized and each shape organized. So again, the, this shape here in relation to this shape here, this eyebrow is a little bit more raised. So let's go ahead and put that in. So a little bit more. Right to about there, I think. Now I'm gonna switch back to the flesh tone. It's gonna help me to carve this shape up a little bit. And I'm not cleaning off any of the brushes. So uh, just, just be aware that it does save quite a bit of time to have your brushes organized in that way. It's gonna take some getting used to it. Believe me, I'm still getting used to it. But again, I've really been trying to improve my Alla Prima approach. I've been looking at my previous paintings and my techniques and they're, they're pretty good to get started off with. But I'm really trying to look for a technique, uh, kind of like a golden technique that um, I can demonstrate for all of you and that everyone can follow. So this comes out to about like that and then cuts in that way. Okay, so now the next thing we're gonna do is mix up some little uh, brushes for these darker accents. So now we have two uh, smaller brushes. These are, uh, these are synthetics now. So I'm gonna be using a little bit of 
the background color mixed with the shadow color. So a little bit of this into this. Still not trying to lose the boundary between um, these colors. And then I'm going to want to put in a little bit of this uh, kind of the background color into this. With a different brush, of course. So first we'll start off with that kind of more reddish tone. Right into here. That's the corner of the concavity of the eye socket. But Sargent just describes it as a brush stroke. We'll use a couple little kind of marks there to indicate the side of the concavity of the eye socket. And over here as well. Now we're quickly going to cool off that color um, with a little bit of sap green on the side. So in case you're wondering how I'm going to get this and the fact that I just switched into sap green means I'm actually going to have to discard this brush or clean it. And by discard I don't mean throw away, I mean just kind of put it off to the side. See this very distinct angle. This very distinct angle is something that Sargent describes as a brush stroke, a single brush stroke. But of course he's uh, tricking us because he does have a little bit of a half tone here. So it's not just as it appears right now. Later on we'll get into more of the half tones there, but this is going to be an accent. And then the side of the ramus of the jaw goes right into there. Now we're going to switch to that darker brush that we had. Quickly, very quickly, we're going to guesstimate where these eyes are going to fit. A little shape there. And a little shape, let's look at the angle between them now. A little shape here. Now, remember, as I said, with Alla Prima, things are going to look a little goofy, a little more goofy than, um, say, the classical approach. So I know there's going to be people out there saying, like, Oh, he doesn't know how to paint. Uh, but, you know, it takes time. It takes time. So we're going to use a little bit of our fan brush. Try to eliminate some glare there. And excuse my little goofy accents. Hope I don't offend anyone. You know, I'm kind of thinking of Elmer Fudd when I make certain accents. So that one was my uh, Elmer Fudd. I could do an Eeyore too. Well, I guess there's a little bit of a reddish tone right here. Maybe just right there. But anyway, come on, you gotta have fun with this, right? So I'm adding a little bit of a lighter area with the light brush, and it does have a little more cadmium red medium into it. For those of you that are following me along at home. And I'm gonna switch back to the dark brush for the hair. See how quickly we can move when we have all of these brushes already labeled out for us. And now with that same, um, let's see, the same dark brush, we're going to add a little bit of the background color to it. Try to throw in a little accent very quickly. Oh, accent there. Switching back to the um, cast shadow color. I'm going to put in this little mark here. Very quickly now. I'm looking at the corner of the uh, bulb of the nose in relation to the pupil, using a little vertical gesture. 
But here's the thing, okay, here's the thing. We most likely, I most likely will not get each of these shapes placed in the right uh, area. So really what it is, is we're putting kind of a little bit more than we need and trying to keep it organized so that we can come back in and make these shapes more and more specific. Now notice how I'm just very easily switching back and forth between these brushes. Simplicity and organization is going to be really useful for you with this painting. And again, I really hope that that side-by-side -side format is working out. I don't know if it's going to work as I'm filming this, so. Now let's go ahead and put in this little dark shape here. And again, this is with that same dark brush. So what we're gonna want is uh, a little bit of the structure of the uh, muzzle, the area surrounding the mouth. So again, I'm just gonna go back into the flesh tone brush. So um, let's, how about this? Let's get into the half tone brush. Remember the half tone brush? And we're gonna just put this shape right there. And it's a little bit cooler. Uh, so a little bit of yellow ochre, titanium white, and uh, sap green is gonna go into that. It's gonna be a little bit cooler. Now with the background brush, I'm gonna carve this in a little bit. See how easily we're moving back and forth. Stay, we're gonna stay away from the, from the mouth for a little while. Just because on a practical level, the mouth is really easy to move around. So instead, we're gonna look at the structure uh, encompassing the mouth. Half tone brush. And again, with each little shape, we're making more and more specific marks. So now, remember that kind of that brush that I made a little bit too green there? That might actually work uh, for this instance here. Now remember, I'm going to be cutting this video into segments. So um, I don't know how or which segments I'm going to trim this video. It all depends on the length of the uh, video. So those of you that are going to want to follow along with me with this painting, um, perhaps if you're kind of maybe at this stage or something like that, where the painting dries, it's okay if the painting dries. I know that ala prima means wet on wet, but it's actually, it's, it's okay to let it dry in between certain stages. But um, if you really do, want to follow along with this painting, I would maybe wait until all of the videos for this painting are released. So a little bit more sap green into that color. And again, remember that color that we had there? It was essentially this color just added a little sap green. Now with the background brush, we're gonna add a little bit more yellow ochre, cadmium red. Really trying to differentiate that background shape and try to get it just how Sargent has it. I think, I think it looks a little more red, at least to my computer screen. Now this definitely I have to take a look now at the corner of the, uh, the neck. I think this has to come out a little more. So a little bit of yellow ochre, cadmium red. A little bit of yellow ochre, cadmium red there. Now I'm gonna to switch to the flesh tone brush and just gonna go ahead and make this shape a little bit more specific now. 
carving that up there. And then we're gonna add more specificity to this shape. It's gonna go all the way up there now. So with the half tone brush, I'm gonna add a little bit of sap green to it. We're gonna put in that little accent first. This accent here. And we're gonna just kind of very lightly apply a value transition here. But very, very lightly. Just because this area is facing the light a little bit less. And we're gonna do the same kind of thing over here. So it's a little bit of sap green into the halftone color that we already had mixed up. I'm going to switch back to the flesh tone color. A little bit of titanium white, cadmium red. I'm going to be pushing that corner of the eye a little further out. And on this same brush, we're going to add a little bit of the half tone, but only a tiny bit. And we're going to start to put in some of these little intricate shapes here. So now at this point, the video is starting to get very, very long. So I'm thinking I might um, have to cut it at this point. So the last thing I'll do for uh, this segment of the video unless I already cut it. Let's put a little bit of cadmium red into that. And then the same kind of thing we're gonna do over here. So I think that's going to be the first segment of this paint along. I'm sorry, it was a little bit confused in the beginning as to where I would make the cut. So I think this is going to be the, the end maybe of the first segment. It, it all depends on the footage. So this is really new to me doing this uh, paint along style. So we're going to have to work along uh, a little bit of uh, the learning curve, at least on my part for this. So that being said, I really hope that today's video helps you out. I hope it's a little bit something interesting, a little something different. And um, I would actually suggest uh, if you want to follow along with this painting on your own, um, maybe wait for all of the segments to be uploaded just so that you have, like I do down here, an arsenal of all of the large uh, areas of paint already ready for you to continue um, painting. So that is, uh, I would wait for the last segment of the paint along. So it'll be paint along sergeant, I don't know what I'll title it, paint along sergeant part one, part two, part three, or whatever. Um, oops, I don't really think that there will be that many. I think that this one will be done maybe in, I don't know, two or three parts. So somewhere along the line during the week, uh, you'll have the other segment. As for the larger painting that we're working on, I know some of you are like, what is he doing? Again, in the beginning of this video, I, um, I told you what was going on, that one major portion of the painting hadn't dried overnight as I wanted it to, so I'm kind of thinking on my feet. I decided, what would I do if I was just painting at home? Sergeant, Sergeant Master Copy, Ala Prima Practice, that's what I'd be doing, and that's what I'm trying to guide you along with. So that being said, I really hope that today's video helps you out. I wish you the best in all of your artwork. And as always, I'm trying to bring the experience of being here uh, creating these paintings to you. So I wish you the best, and I'll be back again very soon. And here is the painting with the camera as close to front and center as I can potentially get it. And I'm going to continue working on this painting today. Uh, it's just you're going to receive those uh, uploads uh, later on during the week. So um, yes, the painting is kind of at a an awkward stage right now. It's uh, certainly a stage I wouldn't want to uh, say it's finished. I would not want to say this is finished. So uh, those of you that are in the comments, um, 
This is not finished. This is me guiding you along through uh, the paint along. That being said, I really hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll be back again very soon.